Hello hockey fans, and welcome back to another video. Like everyone else in today's society, cancer has affected many players in the National Hockey League one way or another. From league journeymen such as John Cullen or Brian Boyle, to one of the best players to have ever played the game in Mario Lemieux, several notable players have been diagnosed with this life-threatening illness during their careers. I mean, we just saw Philadelphia Flyers forward Oscar Lindblom beat his cancer just this past season, and he still has plenty of hockey left to play in the coming years, folks. While most of these players were able to continue their pro careers after their treatment was complete, many of them, quite understandably, weren't the same player upon their return. Whether they were already getting older and starting to see their numbers decline, they spent extended time away from the sport in order to get back to their dominant playing level, or they wanted one last lap before calling it quits, due to its life-altering effects, several players who have suffered from cancer have seen it directly impact their success or their longevity in the league. However, one player would not only beat this illness during the prime of his career, he would go down in history as one of the greatest players his country has ever seen. This is the story of Saku Koivu, from cancer to the Hall of Fame. In order to tell this inspirational tale, allow me to take you back to June 26th, 1993, when Finnish forward Saku Koivu was selected 21st overall in the 1993 draft by the Montreal Canadiens, having scored 10 points in 46 games with Finnish Liga side TPS Turku during the prior 92-93 season. After spending the next two years refining his game back home in Finland and earning a boatload of individual awards thanks to scoring 127 points in just 92 games, Koivu would make the move to North America and join Montreal's roster for the 95-96 NHL season. Though he knew little of the language and grew up in a vastly different culture across the pond, the 21-year-old forward would quickly make an impact for the Canadians, as he notched 20 goals and 45 points in 82 games during his rookie season, finishing 4th place in Calder voting in the process. This impressive debut would quickly earn Koivu a more permanent place in Montreal's lineup, where the former first-round pick would develop into a vital member of the roster, both on the score sheet and in the locker room too. During his first four seasons in the NHL, Koivu would record 65 goals and 202 points in 266 games. Pretty good numbers for a guy who played more than 70 games in a season just once in that span, thanks to suffering several notable injuries to his knee and leg that kept him out of the lineup for quite some time. Koivu's consistent production, coupled with his reputation as the heart and soul of the team, prompted the Canadians to reward him with one of the greatest honours a member of the Bleu Blanc et Rouge could receive. On September 30th, 1999, Montreal announced that Saku Koivu had been named the new captain of the franchise, following Vincent Damfus's departure from the organisation earlier in the year. This meant that Koivu had officially become the first European-born player to serve as the captain of the Montreal Canadiens, and his name would now be mentioned alongside former Habs legends, Hall of Famers, and some of the greatest players to ever play the game. Not bad company to keep, eh folks? Despite donning the C on his jersey from that moment onwards, Koivu's first few years as captain would see him continue to struggle with the injury bug, as the Finnish forward would suit up in just 78 of the next 162 games due to suffering a dislocated shoulder, another knee injury, and arthroscopy surgery. That said, he was able to score 68 points in those 78 games, so despite being out of the lineup more often than not, he still managed to be one of the team's most productive players on the ice. However, injuries were about to be the least of his worries. On September 6, 2001, Koivu met with Canadian's physician David Mulder as he was experiencing some serious pain in his stomach and had started to vomit frequently. After investigating his symptoms, Mulder discovered what he believed to be some form of cancer in Koivu's stomach. Once he had ran more detailed tests and confirmed his suspicions, Mulder informed Koivu that he had been diagnosed with Burkitt's lymphoma, a form of stomach cancer which could be fatal if not treated quickly or effectively although the cure rate is approximately 90% in developed countries. This diagnosis meant that Koivu, who had already spent much of the last two seasons in the press box due to injuries, would have to spend even more time out of Montreal's lineup in order to undergo extensive treatment to remove the cancer from his system. In fact, it was expected that Koivu would have to sit out the entirety of the following 0102 NHL season in order to recover. Aware of the risks to his long-term health, 
Koivu agreed to put his career on hold and undergo cancer treatment during the upcoming season. So at just 27 years of age, Saku Koivu had gone from captain of the Montreal Canadiens and one of the team's most productive players on the ice to undergoing rigorous treatment for stomach cancer. Regardless of the high probability of recovery, I honestly cannot imagine how tough it must have been for Koivu to receive that kind of news, especially when you're a pro athlete in the prime of both your life and your career. It just goes to show you folks that you can have all the money in the world or be in peak physical fitness, but cancer can still find a way to affect you, whether it be through you suffering it personally or by proxy through someone else in your life. Though it would be hard going for quite some time, Koivu wasn't about to let his cancer bring his career to an end. As the 0102 NHL season progressed, Koivu would continue to stay off the ice and undergo intense treatment in the hopes of removing the cancer from his system. Despite being unable to help his team on the ice, the Finnish forward would still remain an inspiring presence off it, as he received a large number of get well soon letters and emails from fans eager to show their support and wish him a quick and safe recovery. Koivu also kept regular contact with Penguin superstar Mario Lemieux and former NHL scorer John Cullen, both of whom had beaten their own bouts of cancer during their careers and had both made successful returns to the NHL in the years that followed. Having spent five months undergoing treatment and chemotherapy, Koivu would receive the greatest news of his life in February of 2002. The treatment had been a success, and the cancer was now in remission. Saku Koivu had overcome stomach cancer and had beaten his Burkitt's lymphoma. With spirits at an all-time high, Koivu was eager to plan his return to the Habs lineup and get back onto the ice with his teammates as soon as possible. However, Habs physician David Mulder once again reminded the Finn that he still had a long way to go before he was ready to return to the NHL. Before he could even think about lacing up his skates again, Mulder gave Koivu several benchmarks that he needed to attain. Restore the protein in his muscle, get his heart rate back to a normal level after exercise, and increase his red blood cell count. Mulder expected that Koivu would be able to achieve these targets by the time the following 0203 season rolled around. But ever the competitor, Koivu looked to smash each of these goals as quickly as possible through hard work and sheer determination. In fact, Koivu's commitment to getting back into shape saw him reach each of his benchmarks just a few months after getting clear of the cancer, leading Mulder to refer to Koivu as, quote, a preparation machine. This astonishing progress in such a short span of time led to Koivu receiving even more great news from his team physician. In early April 2002, just a few months after his cancer went into remission, Mulder deemed Koivu healthy enough to make his return to the National Hockey League, so he gave the green light for the 27-year-old to return to the Habs lineup for the conclusion of the 0102 NHL season. So not only had he just beaten cancer, Koivu had worked so hard and recovered so quickly that he could make his triumphant return to the league before the season he was diagnosed was over. If that's not one of the most incredible recoveries the hockey world has ever seen, I don't know what is, folks. On April 9th, 2002, Saku Koivu put on his Montreal Canadiens jersey for the first time in nearly a calendar year and took to the ice for the Habs against the Ottawa Senators. As the captain of the franchise stepped out onto the ice for warm-ups, each of the 20,000 fans in attendance rose to their feet and gave the Finnish forward a standing ovation. In fact, the crowd stood and cheered continuously for eight straight minutes, welcoming their captain home with thunderous applause and showing just how happy they were to see he had recovered from such a dangerous and life-altering illness. Though Koivu would play just eight minutes of ice time and have a silent night on the scoreboard, it really didn't matter. The Finnish forward had just returned to the best league in the world less than two months after entering remission for cancer. I don't care if he played only one shift that night, Koivu had achieved something very little people thought possible. Not only would Koivu suit up against the Senators, the Habs captain would also stick around for the final two games of Montreal's season, as the Canadians looked to book their first playoff berth in four years. If Koivu's rapid return wasn't impressive enough for you, the 27-year-old would score two points in the final three games of the season to help Montreal narrowly clinch the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference meaning the Habs were going to the playoffs for the first time in half a decade. Once they made it back to the postseason, Koivu would continue to show why he was so vital to his team's success, 
as he potted 10 points in 12 playoff games before the Habs were eliminated in the second round by the Carolina Hurricanes. So after spending almost the entire season off the ice to undergo extensive cancer treatment, Saku Koivu had scored 12 points in 15 games upon his return. A guy that had just beaten stomach cancer went almost a point per game in both the regular season and the playoffs. No wonder he was named team captain. Talk about leading by example. This triumphant return to the league was also deemed so inspiring that Koivu was awarded the 2002 Bill Masterton Trophy given for perseverance, sportsmanship and dedication to hockey. I mean, you couldn't have given it to anyone else really, could you? Given how difficult it must have been to get back into game shape so quickly, let alone become one of your team's top scorers immediately upon your return, I honestly have no idea how Koivu was able to do it. Battling off the cancer and getting healthy must have been difficult enough on its own, but to then get to a point where you can handle the fast-paced, hard-hitting game of the NHL just two months after going into remission is one hell of an achievement, especially when the intensity of late-season games is ramped up to a thousand, given each contest can mean the difference between reaching the postseason or heading to the golf course earlier than expected. Being able to return so quickly and light up the scoreboard so often takes more determination and fortitude than the average person has in their entire lives. Then again, Saku Koivu has never been just an average person, has he? Following his turbulent yet inspiring return to the league, Saku Koivu would continue to proudly serve as the Canadiens captain and remain as one of the team's best players for many years. The former first round pick would post a pair of 20 goal seasons and two 70 point seasons en route to scoring 106 goals and 369 points in 345 games over the next six seasons, including a career high 22 goal, 75 point year in 06 07. This meant that after 14 seasons with the Habs, Saku Koivu had scored 191 goals and 641 points in 792 games, which ranked him 10th place in Montreal Canadiens franchise history for points scored in just the 22nd highest games played, meaning that Koivu had cemented himself as one of the most proficient scorers for the league's oldest and most successful franchise. Not only that, but Koivu would end up serving as Montreal's team captain for 10 straight seasons before leaving the team as a free agent and signing with the Anaheim Ducks in 2009. This decade with the C on his jersey tied Habs legend Jean Beliveau for the longest captaincy in Montreal Canadiens franchise history, and made him the first captain to not be traded away from the team in quite a while. Koivu would then spend the rest of his career with the Anaheim Ducks and continue to put up decent numbers despite him entering his mid to late 30s, as he notched 64 goals and 191 points in 332 games between the years 2009 and 2014, including a 19 goal, 52 point season during his first year in California in 0910. After his fifth season in Anaheim had come to an end, and with him fast approaching his 39th birthday, the Finnish forward decided that it was time to call it quits. On September 10th, 2014, Saku Koivu officially announced his retirement from the NHL, having spent 18 seasons in the league and posting 255 goals and 832 points in 1,124 games. Not bad for a guy who had to fight off cancer during his prime, eh folks? Following his retirement, Saku Koivu headed back home to Finland and embarked on a career in management, as he took a hands-on role with Finnish Liga side TPS Turku, the team he played for before moving to Montreal, and a franchise he has owned since 2007. In fact, Koivu continues to serve as the owner and a senior advisor for Turku during the current 2021 season, so he is still very active in Finnish hockey to this very day. During his time in the front office, Koivu has received several awards and accolades for his impressive and lengthy playing career. For example, during the 15-16 season, Koivu was inducted into the Finnish Hockey Hall of Fame thanks to his service to Finnish hockey both on and off the ice over the last two decades. However, Koivu would also go on to earn one of the greatest international awards a hockey player could in their career. On May 21st, 2017, Saku Koivu was inducted into the International Ice Hockey Federation Hall of Fame thanks to his lengthy career in the NHL as well as his performance for the Finnish national team. Between 1999 and 2010, Koivu scored 94 points in 89 games for Team Finland en route to helping his country win a number of medals at both the World Championships and the Olympic Games, 
including a silver medal at the 2006 Winter Olympics and a gold medal at the 1995 World Championships, the first time that Team Finland would take home gold at the event. So not only had he become one of the best players in Montreal Canadiens history, beat cancer during his prime, played 18 years in the NHL and scored over 800 points in 1100 games, he also won a number of medals with the Finnish national team and was inducted into the IIHF Hall of Fame as one of the best Finnish players to ever play the game. Now that's what I call a very successful career, folks. And that's the story of Saku Koivu's journey from cancer to the Hall of Fame. What do you guys think about Koivu's incredible journey or his career in the NHL? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, John Plomin, Jordan Whitehead, Roman from London, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.